If it goes through the keyhole, it will hit us April 13th, 2036. The chances of this now, our data tell us, is several in a million. But there are people who buy lottery tickets with worse odds than that, expecting to win. It'll hit Santa Monica, it'll explode. 50 feet tsunami, five story tall, that will come to the west coast of North America and basically wipe it clean. clean. Imagine cruising through a vast space minefield. That's pretty much what Earth is doing every day. Neil deGrasse Tyson, a big shot in the world of astrophysics, gets the heebie-jeebies when it comes to asteroids. And honestly, it's easy to see why. These aren't just the stuff of epic sci-fi movies, they're real, and they're out there zipping around in space. We're talking about chunks of rock and metal, leftovers from the solar system's early days, some of which could be on a collision course with our planet. But what exactly are we dealing with here? Well, it's a mix. You've got asteroids that are no bigger than pebbles, and then you've got the big kahunas, ones that are the size of mountains or even larger, and they're all just floating around in space following their paths around the sun. The thing is, their orbits can be a bit like a pinball machine, unpredictable and at times downright dangerous for Earth. These space rocks are fascinating in a way, they're like time capsules holding secrets from billions of years ago when our solar system was just taking shape, but they can also be a bit scary. After all, a big enough asteroid smacking into Earth could be bad news. We're talking about potential global consequences, from tsunamis and earthquakes to climate changes that could really shake up life as we know it. Have you ever thought about the times Earth has played cosmic dodgeball with asteroids? Let's talk about some of Earth's most dramatic run-ins with these space rocks, starting with a biggie, the Chicxulub impactor. Picture this. About 66 million years ago, a giant asteroid, about 10 kilometers across, comes hurtling towards Earth. It crashes into what's now the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, and boom, it unleashes energy like billions of atomic bombs, creating a crater 150 kilometers wide and 20 kilometers deep. The aftermath? A global climate shakeup, and about 75% of Earth's species, including the dinosaurs, say their final goodbyes. Fast forward to a more recent event, the Tunguska explosion in 1908. This wasn't a direct hit, but it was still a showstopper. An asteroid or comet fragment, maybe about 50 to 60 meters wide, bursts in the sky over Siberia. The blast, with the power of 10 to 15 megatons of TNT, flattens a whopping 80 million trees across 2,150 square kilometers. That's an area bigger than some major cities. And get this, there was no crater found. Scientists think the object just blew up mid-air, about 5 to 10 kilometers above the ground. The Tunguska event is a bit of a cosmic wake-up call. It showed us that these space rocks can be pretty sneaky and unpredictable. It wasn't like we had a heads up to brace ourselves. This unpredictability is why keeping an eye on the sky for asteroids is super important. You never know when the next big one might make an unwelcome visit. Let's get into the fascinating world of asteroid tracking, where scientists become cosmic detectives. Imagine trying to keep tabs on space rocks cruising through our solar system, some of which might get a bit too cozy with planet Earth. This task is a blend of astronomy, physics, and some serious sleuthing. So how do you track a hunk of rock zipping through space? First, you gotta spot it. Scientists use beefy telescopes, both chilling on Earth and orbiting in space, to catch a glimpse of these celestial wanderers. Once they've got an asteroid in their sights, it's all about measuring where it is, how bright it is, and how it's moving compared to the stars. This info helps work out the asteroid's orbit, speed, size, and where it might be heading. The process, called astrometry, is like celestial cartography, mapping out the positions and paths of these space rocks. But spotting an asteroid is just the start. Predicting where it's going to be in the future is a whole other ball game. It involves some hefty math and computer simulations. Scientists juggle the laws of how celestial bodies move and toss in factors like the pull of gravity from other planets, the asteroid's own twirl and shape, and even how the sun's heat gives it a gentle nudge something known as the Yarkovsky effect. One of the big players in this game is NASA's Near-Earth Object Observations Program. These folks are on a mission to find and track at least 90% of the near-Earth objects out there that are 140 meters or more in diameter, the kind of rocks that could really ruin our day if they hit us. Then there's the European Space Agency's HERA mission, gearing up for a 2024 launch. 
Hera is going to take a close look at the Didymos asteroid system and its little buddy Dimorphos. It's like a follow-up gig to NASA's DART mission, which is testing out if we can actually shove an asteroid off its course by ramming a spacecraft into it. But here's the kicker. Tracking asteroids isn't a walk in the park. There are loads of them we haven't even found yet, and some are tough to track because they're small, dark, or zipping around super fast. Plus, space is huge, and asteroids are like needles in a cosmic haystack. Have you ever thought about how Earth has had some really close calls with asteroids? These near misses are like nature's warning shots, reminding us that we're just a tiny part of a vast, dynamic universe. Take the Chelyabinsk event in 2013, for example. This was a real eye-opener. A relatively small asteroid, just about 20 meters across, came out of nowhere and exploded over Chelyabinsk, Russia. The blast was massive, releasing energy around 30 times greater than the Hiroshima bomb. It wasn't just a light show, the shockwave broke windows and even damaged buildings, injuring over 1,000 people. It was like a scene from a movie, but very real and pretty scary. This event showed us that even a small space rock can pack a massive punch, but Chelyabinsk isn't the only time Earth had a narrow escape. Let's rewind to 1908, the Tunguska event. An asteroid or comet fragment blew up over Siberia, flattening about 80 million trees over a massive area. It's like Mother Nature showing off her power. More recently, in 2021, we had asteroid 2001 FO32, about 900 meters in size, cruised by Earth. It was 2 million kilometers away, which sounds like a lot, but in space terms, it's pretty close. What's tricky about these cosmic wanderers is that they can be hard to spot. They're like stealthy space ninjas, small, dark, or sometimes hidden by the sun's glare. This makes predicting their paths quite challenging. Scientists are constantly on the lookout for these elusive space rocks. Projects like PanStars in Hawaii and the Catalina Sky Survey in Arizona are like our cosmic watchtowers. They're scanning the skies, trying to spot any potential threats. And then there's NASA's NEOWISE mission, using an infrared space telescope to find asteroids that might be too dark for regular telescopes to see. But here's the catch. Our tech isn't perfect. We're pretty good at spotting the big asteroids, but the smaller ones, like the one that hit Chelyabinsk, can slip under the radar. With millions of these small near-Earth asteroids zooming around, it's a bit like finding a needle in a haystack. Now let's wade into the mysterious world of asteroid impact conspiracy theories. It's a place where wild speculation meets a sprinkle of imagination, and sometimes it can clash pretty hard with scientific facts. These theories have a bit of everything, from hush-hush government secrets to alien shenanigans. One popular tale you might hear whispers about is that governments or big space agencies, like NASA, are sitting on a gold mine of secret info. They supposedly know about a doomsday asteroid on a crash course with Earth, but are keeping it on the down low to prevent mass panic. It's a theory that could be straight out of a thriller movie, but when you shine the light of science on it, it kind of falls apart. Here's the thing. Keeping an eye on asteroids is a huge international effort. We're talking about a network of observatories and agencies all around the globe, constantly watching the skies. Keeping a secret of this magnitude under wraps, highly unlikely. Then there's this other out there idea. Some asteroids zipping through space are actually alien spacecraft or probes under the watchful eye of extraterrestrial beings. It's a theory often fueled by the weird shapes or paths some asteroids take. But in the world of astronomy, these oddities usually have more down-to-earth explanations like natural erosion, cosmic smash-ups, or just the simple tug of gravity. And let's not forget about the theories that suggest some shadowy groups or governments are cooking up secret plans to either weaponize asteroids or use them for some sort of space-age power play. While the idea of redirecting asteroids is a genuine scientific pursuit, the notion of using them as cosmic weapons is more sci-fi than science fact. It's important to remember that these conspiracy theories, as entertaining as they might be, can sometimes cast a shadow over the real, critical work happening in asteroid tracking and planetary defense. This field is all about open collaboration and sharing knowledge. Scientists from around the world team up, share their findings in peer-reviewed journals, and keep databases like the Minor Planet Center up to date with the latest asteroid orbits. Plus, there's Asteroid Day an annual event where space experts gather to spread the word about asteroids. 
It's all about education and transparency, showing just how open the field of asteroid research really is. So while it's fun to entertain these space rock conspiracies, the truth is often more grounded and collaborative. It's a global effort where scientists are the real heroes, working hard to keep our planet safe from any unwelcome cosmic visitors. What if I told you that we're actually cooking up plans to save Earth from a Hollywood-style asteroid catastrophe? It's true. Scientists and engineers are working on some pretty cool strategies to deflect a rogue asteroid heading our way. This isn't sci-fi anymore, it's real science in action. Let's start with the big guns, nuclear deflection. Now, this isn't about blowing an asteroid to smithereens like in the movies. Instead, it's about setting off a nuclear explosion near the asteroid to gently push it onto a different path. It's like giving the asteroid a little nudge away from Earth. This could be a game changer for dealing with big asteroids, but it's also a bit controversial. There's the whole unpredictability of nuclear blasts in space and the risk of breaking the asteroid into smaller, yet still dangerous pieces. Then there's this super cool idea called kinetic impactors. Think of it as playing interstellar billiards. We send a spacecraft to smash into the asteroid at high speed, which changes its course. NASA's got this project called DART, the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, where they're actually going to try this out. They're planning to whack a spacecraft into an asteroid's little moon to see if they can change its orbit. It's like a real-life experiment to test out our planetary defense skills. Another nifty idea is the gravity tractor. Picture a spacecraft just hanging out near an asteroid for a long time, using its own gravity to slowly but surely pull the asteroid into a safer orbit. It's a slow and steady approach and less likely to break the asteroid apart. But it's a bit like watching paint dry, it takes a long time. And get this, some folks are thinking about using solar sails or even lasers to push asteroids away. These methods are more about gentle nudges than big shoves. Solar sails use the pressure of sunlight, while lasers would vaporize part of the asteroid to create a little jet stream pushing it off course. These ideas are still in the early stages. Why don't you throw in asteroid defense? We need some of that. We just have a fast-moving object is kind of like a bomb when it makes contact. Fire one of those 18,000-mile-an-hour bolts. Correct. Out. And then the thing blows to multiple bits.